Awesome. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Functional Funk Med Nation podcast. I have the pleasure of being here today with James Maskell, who, uh, to be honest, has, has done so many things over the last few years. It would probably take 10 minutes just to, to talk through them all. Um, James, welcome. I'm, I'm really glad you're here. Funk Med Nation. I'm all about it. I'm glad to be here with, uh, with the whole nation. So great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's a pleasure. So I, there's so many different ways that this conversation can go. And I know you and I had agreed that, you know, we we're going to do this more as a, an organic conversation rather than just a whole bunch of pre-planned questions. Um, one of the first things that I want to ask you about is, and this is really just coming from my own experience and in my own observation, but I know that you wrote your first book, The Evolution of Medicine, back in 2016-ish, yeah. somewhere around there, I think it was. And, um, you know, at that time, I was in, I was doing a funk med practice in uh, North Tampa, like the West La Chapel area. And uh, there was a guy that I was renting space from, and he asked me one day if I had heard of, of you and evolution of medicine. And I hadn't. And, you know, I started paying attention, and it kind of seemed to me, like I said to you right before we started recording, you know, it seemed to me like, and maybe it's just my experience, but like you weren't on anybody's radar. And then all of a sudden, bam, you were on everybody's radar. So how did, how did all of that happen? Like, how did you, and, and maybe again, this is just my observation. Maybe you were there and I just didn't know about you or the work that you were doing. Well, look, they say, you know, every overnight success is 10 years in the making. Right. So, yeah. um, it was actually about 10 years. Exactly. So I, Look, first of all, like I grew up in a household where natural health was the way. And mm. I didn't really realize that that was weird until I went to school and realized like no one else saw a chiropractor, no one else took homeopathy, no one else ate vegetables, right? right. And, you know, that yeah. was just uh, sort of a rude awakening moving from where I'd grown up with and sort of like more of a commune kind of a vibe to going to school and realizing like, my norms were not other norms, right? Mm, so yeah, that was yeah. that was sort of my my early days. Then I, you know, I sort of rejected my weird family, and you know, as as everyone does, and went to did economics. And I thought I need to be an investment banker. And during my economics training, I did health economics, and that's when I realized, like, holy shit, like we're we're about to go off a cliff, and that mm. cliff is built on chronic illness. Right, chronic illness is driving such a increase in costs, whether that be in the UK where I was at school or the US where I was born. Um, that, like, you know, in my lifetime, and not like when I'm 80, when I'm like 50, which is now mm. only eight years away, we we're just basically going to completely run out of money because so yep. much of our money was going to be spent on chronic illness. And 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 I also recognize that the paradigm of care that everyone else was doing had no real shot at reversing chronic illness, right? You take one yeah. drug and then you're on three drugs and then you're on five drugs and the individual cost of care goes up. And if you multiply that by 300 million, that's how you get those numbers. And I knew that chronic disease was driving it. And I just knew, like I had to maintain relationships with those kind of doctors. I was just aware that there was a different way of doing healthcare. So in 2005, and this was like, a psychedelic assisted decision in retrospect, I would say, I decided that I was going to move to America, take advantage of my American passport, which I had because I was born in Colorado. Yeah. And I was going to like leave my investment banking job, take a 90% pay cut and try and understand if, you know, the first thing is, is chronic disease reversible and under what circumstances is it? And that was the beginning of the journey. So that was 2005. The book came out in 2016 and like, mm. you know, in between all of that was, you know, first of all, me seeking to understand, right, what's really yep. going on. And then, you know, from about 2011, 12 onwards was now, you know, starting to like share my own ideas of, of what yeah. was possible. <clears throat> so what was what was in the gap between 2005 and 2016? I mean, uh, were you you said that you were learning. I mean, what did that look like? Were you focusing more on the economic side and understanding, you know, insurance and pay as you go versus, you know, cash? Or were you starting to delve into listening to functional medicine experts and, and learning more about the clinical side? Because, you know, I, I go to, for example, I go to your YouTube channel yep. and I listen to some of the interviews that you do. And 
it's quite clear that you have come to some level of understanding of some of the pathophysiology of the chronic diseases and the metabolic pathways that we're all trying to manipulate as we interact with patients and give them our protocols, whether that's diet changes or supplementation or whatever the case might be. So what was, what was in that roughly 10 year period between when you made that commitment and when you came out with the book and all of a sudden there was this new thing that we could latch onto and start building community around it. Yeah. So first things first, I went to work in a practice. So I moved to Georgia um, and I started working in a clinic that my cousin had started Mm. and he had worked previously in in the spa industry, but was convinced that the future of medicine was going to be like, this kind of care delivered in, in a spa environment. And I yeah. started working in this business and that was, so a couple of things happened there. One is I saw chronic disease being reversed right by the practitioner there. So I saw people that in three, six, nine, 12 months went from like very chronically ill to actually like physically transformed in front of me. So I, I was yeah. bearing witness to chronic disease reversal, which sure. was, was interesting. And secondly, you know, that, that clinic was extremely well run, right? This was this was a, a, a clinic that had a operations manual nine inches thick. Mm-hmm. Every process was documented. Right. And I, I mean, I just thought that's the way the clinics ran. And so I was just like, oh, this is how you run a clinic. And <laughs> it was doing well. And, and I was witnessing it. So I'm, that was I'm, laughing. I'm, I'm laughing because we, we know how clinics should run, but that's not how most clinics are run. Oh yeah, so it was it was a great it was a great learning period. So then in in 2007, so now 18 months in, I wanted to see like is this a one off? Like I was in the hills of rural Georgia, right? So I yeah. was I, I had a, an inkling that there were other clinics that were doing this, but I didn't really know. So I took a job where I could find out and I was a supplement sales rep, right? And I was selling to doctors in a in a wide range, right? So on one end you had like people doing energy medicine in their garage, right? Mm-hmm. You'd had a weekend certificate in something right through to, you know, highly trained physicians who, you know, had gone, tre- gone under care themselves because they had an issue they couldn't work out, had reversed their own chronic condition and were like, what was that? And how do I do it? Right. And yeah. everything in between chiropractors, acupuncturists, naturopathic doctors and everything. And that was my learning. Like, and I would, I would say to anyone, if you want to learn about this industry, the quickest way to do it is to sell to that industry. Because what I did, if I was meeting you, if you were my customer in those days, I would, I would hang out. And I, the first thing that I would do is basically ask you all about your practice. What do you specialize in? What do you get the best results in? How do you do it? And basically for the next for the next four years, that's all I did. I put 100,000 miles on my car. My territory was Virginia to Maine. And I met every kind of weird and wonderful doctor. Now, the work, the, the, the thing that I was selling was more focused on, I would say, even further left than functional medicine at that point. It was like bioenergetic medicine. So I was working wow. with a lot of people who were doing like muscle testing and, yep. you know, and sort of like homotoxicology and spagyric herbs. And so a couple of things are happening. One, I'm learning about all the different types of practitioners and learning really rapidly because I'm making 40 outbound phone calls a day. I'm meeting with two doctors a day and I'm building my business. But I'm also going to every, I'm going to these conferences that the company's putting on. I'm actually putting on these conferences. So I'm calling all the doctors, getting these events going on. And that's where I'm starting to learn about physiology, you know, um, you know, how different diseases are manifested, what are the different protocols, what can you do to reverse these issues, you know, how all these different practitioners deal with like being part lifestyle medicine, right? You've got to get people to do the healthy behaviors, but there's also all these precision elements that can be done through lab testing or can be done through muscle testing or whatever. So this is like basically like a four-year you know, training in understanding everything to do with the industry. So that's that's the first part. Yeah. You know, that's interesting. What I'm hearing from that is that, uh, and this is probably fairly unique, is that you have a solid grasp of both the the macroscopic and the microscopic aspects of functional medicine, right? You've got the background of, of the large scale economics and what happens with, you know, broken systems like we have in the insurance model and the road towards bankruptcy all the way down to, as you say, the weird and the wonderful practitioners, because we're, you know, we're, we're clearly not all built the same. We don't all think the same. 
we don't all practice the same. I, I would say we probably all have the same general goals and guidelines, but how many people have you met in your travels, particularly since you started Evo Med? Um, how many people have you met that share that that dual view of the big picture and the small picture? Not that many. Look, I had to I had to put that part of it to bed too. Like for a long time, honestly, I'm not thinking about the big picture at all. I'm just really yeah. trying to understand what is this? What are the commonalities? Like I'm also seeing that these people don't speak the same language. Yeah. Right. You know, that the chiropractor and the acupuncturist are pretty are doing quite similar things, yeah. are affecting the body in similar ways, but don't talk the same language. Yeah. And they're actually like there's barriers to clinics working together to team-based care because it's all, you know, it's all different language. And and honestly, I didn't really hear about functional medicine. I mean, I heard about it, but it wasn't in 2009. Um, so I moved to New York. I, I built my business up enough that I could afford to live in New York. I lived in New Haven, Connecticut for two years, moved to New York, and I went to the Integrative Health Symposium in New York. And that was the first time that I saw Jeff Bland lecture. I'd heard about Jeff Bland and I I went there and I went to that conference. I got myself a ticket and I sat in there and I looked around and I was like, dang, like he's got the attention of doctors, right? MDs are listening to this guy and like paying attention and yeah. are interested in what he has to say because it was very far and few between the mds that i would meet in my in my thing like very very few like very few so you know so i was like oh this is interesting and then the next year i heard christy hughes speak at the same conversation and i saw her lay out the like functional medicine um matrix and that was the first time where i thought to myself hang on a minute like if we're looking for a common language for doctors to like you know, to, to build teams around, right, where people could work together, this has got a lot of the right pieces to it, right? You've got the Lifestyle Medicine Foundation that has to be there. Everyone would say that. You don't get, even homeopaths would say, look, you've got to do the basic, you've got to live a healthy life for homeopathy to work. You can't be eating cheeseburgers yeah. and McDonald's and expect that, you know, your, you know, your um, arnica is going to work well. You've got to be healthy. So I realized like all of them had the health thing, but they had some sort of way of tracking like how the body was breaking down. And, and that's what I recognize is like, look, you don't get a chronic disease overnight. It takes right. a while to happen. So how do we work out? So I, I thought at that point, that was when I started to think, okay, functional medicine maybe is where it's at. And also because the only MDs that I could ever sell to had already had some training in functional medicine. Like right. you can't go from, you can't go from allopathy to bioenergetic medicine in one go. Right. Unless you get chronically ill and 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 have that save you, you typically need to learn systems biology first, right? To in yeah. functional medicine. You know, I'll tell you that th what you just said really resonates with me. I, I've been teaching functional medicine seminars since two thousand and eight, and back in that first year or two, if if I had one medical doctor in a class of say fifty people, that would be unusual. But you know, with the two years of uh, coronavirus accepting, you know, the last couple of years prior to that in teaching, if I didn't have in a room of 50 people, if I didn't have five or six MDs, DOs, nurse practitioners, that would be unusual. And so yeah. it seemed to me that there was, um, you know, what I've experienced as a speaker is that there's a, a, there's been a significant change in the demographics of people going to functional medicine seminars. And there's a change in the sophistication of their understanding of physiology and systems biology, because that's really, and, and I know that you don't probably know anything about my background because we've never met, never talked before, but, um, you know, I've, I've taught for 15 years ish for, uh, Datis Karazian, Apex Energetics. I, I don't know if you're familiar with those, those yeah, names, right. but, yeah. but you know, that, that was, that was the one thing that Dr. Karazian brought to the functional medicine world was you know, let's stop looking at at labs or nutritional surveys and, and looking at nutrient deficiencies in diet. And let's use diagnostic testing to do an analysis of, of a systems-based approach. Um, and I think that once we started teaching that, that resonated with the medical community and the segment of people who were potentially interested in functional or integrative medicine, that kind of spoke to them. And that's radically different than the muscle testing approach or you know like say in the nutritional world the diet survey and let's you know look for your diet diet deficiencies 
Yeah. And so I've seen I've seen a huge change. And this is one of the reasons that I wanted to start talking to industry leaders and, and other clinicians is because functional medicine, from my viewpoint, has changed so radically in the last 10 years. Uh, and, and I'm interested in in hearing your experience with that. Um, I mean, obviously, your organization and the things that you're doing, which now I understand is multiple branches to it, right? You've got Evo Med, you've got the functional forum, you've got uh, heal communities, and, and we'll get to that point. Uh, but what kind of changes have you seen and number one, the demographics of people that are engaging at some level with the work that you do. And what about the sophistication of, let's say, the average practitioner that, that again, engages with, with your type of communities? Yeah, so, I mean, there's no doubt, like, uh, you know, 10 years has gone by since that time. And there's no doubt, like, yeah. you know, and I hope that we've played a role in it to some degree in that there's a functional medicine doctor in every town, yeah. right? And and people have found their way their way to it um, in, in many different ways, right? So, yeah, I mean, you've seen a huge growth in 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 uh, interest in, in doctors, individual doctors, doctors seeing it as a way to sort of, you know, leave the job that they hate and and come to it. I mean, just to, I guess, just to fill in a bit more of the gap. So, you know, from 2011 to 2014, you know, those years, I'm still the sales rep and the supplements. I'm still doing that. And I'm still going to conferences. Now I'm putting on bigger conferences for my territory and my area. But I'm also um, now like sort of flexing my own ideas about practice management. And, you know, around that time is also the like, the internet is starting to be like a real force, right? You could really yeah. do telemedicine for the first time, 2011, right. 12. You could really, you know, you have electronic health records coming on. Um, you have, you know, different technologies emerging. And the big break that I got, honestly, was that I went at the at that 2010 uh, Integrated Health Symposium. I met this guy called Eric Goldman, and he has this publication called Holistic Primary Care, which is like a newspaper for doctors interested in functional integrated medicine. He put me as a speaker in his conference. Mm. So at this point, like I have this alter ego. Yes, I'm the sales rep, but I've created my own sort of program, um, essentially taking the learnings of what, well, you know, as a sales rep, what I realized is that there was this huge black hole of clinical knowledge where I could never learn as much as you. And I didn't really want to. But what I recognized was that most doctors were deficient in the practice management area. No, and I yeah. just knew how to run the practice because I'd run that practice for a year and a half with the operations manual. So I would kind of make a deal with these doctors. I would say, look, I'll help you run your practice and get your operations and things dialed in and your hiring, your systems, but you got to use my supplements. That's how I get paid. Mm -hmm. So that's that was like my journey at that point. And then I started essentially a separate company um, where I helped doctors and did consulting for them on their practice. And 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 in 2011, I got my first speaking gig speaking in front of mainstream, you know, MD. So that conference was all MDs. So I, now in 2011, I'm speaking at that conference. So one is I'm now a speaker at a conference with like other big names. So that's how mm -hmm. I start to meet the other big names is that for right. the next four years, I speak at that conference because the first year that I get there, I realize like most other speakers are really boring and I know enough about this crowd and like, I just try and make it like funny and engaging yeah. and like just, you know, making jokes that only a functional medicine doctor would get because like yeah. it's a unique world and I just understand it really well. So, you know, in 2011, I kind of bring the house down. I get brought back every year and I'm building confidence now as like a practice management guy. And I'm starting to, you know, do some things in that end. My wife, starts a business making websites for doctors because I realized that's like a big issue if you're trying to build a successful practice. The website was, you know, pretty average. So I'm like all in and, and learning. And, you know, over those years, so then 2013 comes around and October 2013 is like a is like a key moment. So a couple of things happen. I speak at that conference and then I meet and I meet Dr. Shilpa Saxena and that's the first time I hear about group visits. She speaks mm -hmm. of that one um, that uh, and it was the first time where Eric 
Goldman gave me a camera and was like, why don't you just go and make some content around your conference? So now I'm like interviewing doctors and just saying, hey, would you do a quick interview for the camera? And I realized at that point, like I love interviewing people and it's yeah. really fun and I want to do more of it. And around that same time, I go to the New York naturopathic conference and I see something there, which is that they have these long talks, which they always have hour lectures, but they gave people these 15 minute lectures in between. And I realized like, if you only give people 15 minutes, they give all their best stuff in 15 minutes. And actually an hour, it's basically just like 45 minutes of fluff and stories. Yes. And yes. there's 15 minutes of gold. So essentially, and you know, a number of other things happen in that time. I go out to LA and I realize, oh, there's a thriving practitioner community meetup in LA and there's nothing like that in New York. So me and my partner at that point, and literally at this point, Steve, I've done a hundred practitioner events, tiny events. I've, 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 you know, we've done so many little events. I've come to all kinds of learnings, things like if you have an event and you hire a speaker, like if I hired you to be a speaker for one of my events, if you're good, it makes my event look good. But if you're bad, it makes my look, event look bad. Sure. So I worked out you know, because I didn't really know whether people would be a great speaker or not. Some people, you know, you think they're going to be good or they're not good. So we started out this format where we'd have three speakers doing 15 minutes each rather than, you know, one speaker. And I realized like I did that a couple of times and someone was bad, but the other two was good and the whole event was good. And I was there mm -hmm. like hosting and whatever. And that became the functional forum. So the functional so that's, forum. That's forum, almost yeah. like you modeled that over after like a kind of like a TEDx model. Yeah, well, I saw TED was really kicking off at that time. And I realized like shorter talks are better, attention spans going down. Yeah. And, you know, and also I realized like, look, all of the organizations in healthcare that were doing things like all the big conferences were stuck in the CME model, which is by its nature, extremely boring. Yeah, right. So, for sure. and, and people told me when I came up with the idea for the functional forum, they're like, if you don't have CME, it'll never fly. That's the only yeah. reason why you can get these doctors attention. And I was like, I know that that's not true because I yeah. don't, I can't give a CME talk and I've had doctors laughing and enjoying themselves and whatever at this conference. So I'm going to try and make something that doctors want to watch, yes. right. They want to engage with rather than they're forced to for their CME approval. Yeah. And people said like, it'll never work. So we get the functional forum I, and we do it in New York. So it starts off as the meetup group for doctors in New York. And the first one we do, you know, I use all the efforts that I can to fill it. I've been hustling and making relationships and I have the first show and, you know, I, and it was, a, it was a knockout. And the, the reason why it was a knockout is because I just happened to know Kelly Brogan. She was one of my customers. No one knew who she was. We did the first show. I put her there as the first speaker and she was dynamite. And everyone was just like, they, they couldn't really work out what had just happened. But like I had hosted a show, we had videoed it. I had her, I had my partner, Gabe, do a talk on um, essentially like behavior change. And then yep. Dr. Donnie Wilson, she was the doctor of Mark Bertolini, who was the, at, you know, at that point, the CEO of Aetna. And so we made the show and it was just a hit from day one, like, Everyone loved it. We had, it was full. The second one was full again. I had Larry Pilevsky and then it just had this momentum and it was just the right thing at the right time. Like at that point, live streaming was hard, but in the fourth episode where the live stream actually worked properly, because live streaming wasn't as easy as it was is today. Yeah. I convinced Mark Hyman to come and speak uh, because I had this event and it was the whole series of events on how I got Mark Hyman is like an amazing story in itself. <laughs> But, you know, on the fourth ever episode, we got the streaming right and he came and spoke. And at that event, he announced, he had just flown in from Cleveland that day and he announced the Cleveland Clinic Center for Functional Medicine on my show. I remember that. Yeah. I and so then it was just like, I think, you know, that video got passed around and it was on our YouTube channel. And then suddenly, like, our thing was hot. And, yeah. you know, I had been following like Tom O'Brien had done the gluten summit the year before yeah. after the first episode of the functional forum, when it first went down, the, the tagline for the functional forum was accelerating the evolution of medicine. And essentially we had decided that we wanted to have like some clinical, but have some practice management and some technology as well, because that was going to be our brand right. because no one else was doing that. And like the technology was, a, it was a focus. And the, the reason why we came to that conclusion was also an interesting story. But ultimately, 
we just, you know, after the very first functional forum, I called the guys who did Tom O'Brien summit. And I said, I want to do an evolution of medicine summit. And we agreed next September. And basically from then on, it was just sort of this juggernaut by, by October, 2014. So, you know, by later that year, we had 30,000 doctors watch the October, 2014 event. And then it was already kind of game over because every, everyone else, there's a thousand doctors going to the IFM annual conference, right? So to have that much attention and to have that many email addresses of that many doctors put us just in a radically different position. Yeah. Yes. And like everyone wanted to speak on the show. Everyone wanted to meet me. IFM wanted to make a partnership. All of that stuff, you know, started to happen. And then 2015, it carried on growing and we did the same kind of thing. We did the functional forum. We've done a functional forum every month for nine years now. Right. So, it, you know, in that way. And then the book, which is the first time you came around, that was really, you know, I guess that was the moment when we sort of realized at the beginning of 2016, like, what can we really get our hands around to make an impact with? Like, it's it's one thing to just make content, but still I would meet so many doctors who were like, they love functional medicine and they're doing it on their family, yeah. but they've got a day job being a doctor and they can't like get out. Yeah. And, you know, what we, what we tried to offer them throughout the functional forum and then, you know, through the book was sort of a, a vision that like, hey, all of these other doctors have left conventional care, practice on their own terms, do functional medicine, love their job. And yeah. this is an opportunity. You could do this too. And that's essentially, you know, that was essentially the the brand. But that that came from doing all these functional forums because I would interview all these great people and hear that people had done it. And, you know, so it was, it was, it was almost like five years of that point of in the making of that that part that came up to the book. But you know, yeah. as I said, it all it all happened one step at a time, but it sort of really caught light when the functional forum took off in 2014. Yeah. Yeah, I have uh, just a short anecdote and, and then a couple of questions. Uh, you mentioned Dr. Saxena. Um, when I lived and practiced in North Tampa, I actually lived about a quarter of a mile down from her office. But, you know, she and I never had any opportunity to meet back then. Um, in your early years, when all of this stuff was gearing up, did you get any friction from people who were kind of looking at you sideways going like, you know, this guy's a sales rep for kind of like a fringe supplement company that really only serves a minority within the larger scope of functional medicine or was that easily overcome with your history of running a successful practice and your background in investment banking you know so a couple of things so one is as soon as the functional forum took off i quit that job yeah so like i was i really i realized in 2013 that i couldn't do what i wanted to do in the world as a rep of a supplement company and it was good to learn and it was good you know it gave me the money to do it but like i i and also i realized like you know we came very close to it being the metagenics functional forum like we tried to sell metagenics on giving us 20 grand a month to do the functional forum and they should have done it and they didn't do it yeah and i'm so glad they didn't because we realized like it was way it's it's there's so much like um, tribalism, I guess, in yes. in, yep. in functional medicine yeah. uh, with supplements. We made a decision early on that we were going to be supplement neutral and not have any yeah. supplement like yeah. um, you know, that. And that that was really good. So, you know, everyone who was coming across me for the first time, they didn't know that I was a supplement rep. I didn't really right. talk about it. I yeah. talked about myself as a practice management leader and I had practice management content on each forum. So I, that was it was more of like a shift in positioning. So. You know, yeah. I haven't really spoken about the bioenergetic stuff again for a long time. And it started to come back round again because now you have this whole, um, you know, cohort of medical doctors that have got trained in functional medicine. And when they look into like the niches of like chronic.